Hello, good evening. Sorry this is up a little bit later. Had uh, parent issues to deal with. Yay. Okay. Um, we talked about this in class, but just uh, have it so it's on file for you guys if you need to go back to it. Uh, this is just a little beginning intro into bones. Classification of bones. We've got uh, the bones are come into two categories depending on where they're located. We have the axial skeleton, which as you can see includes the cranium, the vertebrae, the ribs, and then all the way down the vertebral column to the sacrum and then back up around. So everything that includes your trunk is all the axial skeleton. And then we have your appendicular skeleton, which includes the things that hold your arms on and the arms themselves. So that's clavicle, scapula, and the arms. And, <clears throat> sorry, same thing with the legs. It includes your legs and all the hips and things that hold it on as well. So they've got it color coded in here, and which makes it pretty easy to do. In your packet on the very back, there is a skeleton, which you have to ID all the different bones. So it might be a good idea. You don't have to, but it's a good idea to color code the same thing on here as well. Okay, uh, types of bones. There's four different types of bones, depending on their general shape. Ooh, hummingbird attack. Ooh. Uh, we have long bones, which are long and skinny usually. They're made of a shaft, which is this long portion right here, and two ends, one and two. And in the long bones, we typically see a hollow cavity inside. Oh my god, hummingbirds are going to attack my head. Uh. The marrow cavity, which is this space inside, and then the ends usually have a thick, uh, thicker bone inside uh, than because it's hollow inside up here. So we've got the cavity, the compact. Uh, let me try this again the spongy bone in the ends. So long bones, femur, humerus, radius, ulna, tibia, fibula, all those guys. Short bones, which are relatively cube shaped, and so they're kind of like in here, cubes, cubes. So your foot is just made up of a whole bunch of cubes, and so those are all short bones. And the only special short bone that we have would be a sesamoid bone, which is your patella, because you have this tendon that goes like this and attaches to a muscle up here and a muscle down there and right smack in the middle is a bone. So anytime you have a bone specially formed within a tendon, we call that a sesamoid bone. As far as I know, the patella is the only one there is. We have flat bones. Shut up, cat. Flat bones, as you can imagine, are flat. So if you look at them from the side, they're relatively flat. And usually you can break little holes through them in the middle if you need to. Now because it's flat, it can break easily. And so they've got these projections on here, which actually give it a little extra strength. And the last type of bone, which doesn't fit in any category, would be irregular bones. Because they're, they're not quite cube-shaped because of the arms sticking out. They're not flat. They're not long. So we just call them irregular. So your vertebrae are the greatest example of these, but then our hip bones uh, also fit. Functions of bones, we talked about this as well, that they support... <laughs> Sorry, the hummingbirds are freaking me out. Um, they support your organs inside, so we got all the main organs inside are being nice and nestled inside of your this little cavity created by the bones. Protection, it protects all those main organs inside. Movement, it allows your body to move without the bone. It would just kind of flop there. Mineral storage, specifically calcium and phosphates. Phosphate is just PO4, if you remember that from chemistry. And then blood cell formation. This word is kind of fancy right there and important to know. Hematopoiesis, which is just a formation of blood in your bone marrow. Okay, now bones aren't nice and smooth. They have little things that pop out and little areas like that and small space, a little hole right there, a dip right there, a curl right there. So they all have fancy names, all these little projections. And so we categorize them in one of two forms, things that stick out of the bone or things that dip into the bone. And whoop, there goes my microphone. <laughs> so if they stick out of the bone, we call those projections. And in the table uh, on page 179, we'll show you all the different types and give you examples. And then depressions or openings, these are some, again, examples that you'll find in the table. So this right here is a little dip in the bone, so we'll call that a depression. This sticks out, that's called a trochanter. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a head. And then here's a little trochanter there and there. So we're not going to get into the details, just know that they're, they refer to markings on the bone. Then we got bone texture. We have solid bone and spongy bone. So the spongy bone obviously looks like a sponge. And it's made of all these little arches inside of here. 
and the arches are called trabeculae or trabecula and that just means little beams and so it's kind of like the arches that we see in Roman aqueducts. It's a very strong structure so it gives our bones lots and lots of support. The compact bone doesn't look like much here. We'll learn later on that it's actually really fancy inside and is very deep in uh, structural complexity. All right, and then we've got the last one up next, 4-3, Gross Anatomy of a Bone. All right, so that was just kind of a quick synopsis of what we talked about today. So I'll see you later. Bye.